primary cause of dyslexia, six. In the last video, we talked about Japanese and Chinese characters that were palindromic. This is a Chinese character. Uh, this character represents the word simple. As you can see, on an XY axis, cut down the middle, it can fold on itself. It is not precisely palindromic, but I believe that it is so close that it makes no difference. This character takes 18 to 20 strokes to complete, uh, and there is absolutely no reason to have this character if it was not for the fact that there were two different scanning groups, one from right to left and one from left to right. This is how this would work. In this model, we have the field of vision in pink, which is highlighted, and this would be the primary field of vision for a left to right scanner. Now this field of vision crosses over at the point of the optic chiasma and goes to the left hemisphere. If you were scanning the other way on the blue, uh, on the right hand side, the blue section, uh, going from right to left, this again crosses over and goes to the right hemisphere, it crosses over at the optic chiasma. Now if you were scanning a Japanese uh, character or a Chinese character that was palindromic, this is how it would show. This character can be scanned from left to right and it can also be scanned from right to left and it would be identical. It would give a correct visual image and be sent through the optic chiasma and reinverted as it is. This is how this would work. In this section I've shown these characters on the wall there is the same Japanese character and we've shown it inverted lower down and I've shown it split and I am using a P to, to depict the, the character and a P joined together on the right hand side which is actually a Greek uh, phi and underneath it shows how that would be projected uh, at the back of the retina uh, but the phi would be projected, it would just be inverted, and that would go through the optic chiasma, and then it would be reinstated, and it would produce a correct visual image, because that is palindromic. This is how it would show at the back of the retina. As you can see, the, Chinese, uh, the Japanese character on the lower end is identical to its character at the top so it, it all it is is its mirror image and inverted and that would be sequenced the same but where the character is split suddenly one goes from left to right and the other goes from right to left and the same applies for the, the P when the P is projected it can either show up as a P or a Q. This is another reason why dyslexics uh, confuse P's and Q's. But as a as a phi, it stays together, and then it goes through the optic chiasma and is projected to the right and left hemisphere of the brain I, uh, as an identical image as it is seen because it's palindromic. Now. This palindromic character started very early. If you go back to the early Chinese in 1500 BC, these are some very early Chinese characters. And as we've already stated, Japanese was adopted uh, from the Chinese in the 4th century AD. As you can see from these characters, they are already showing signs of being palindromic. Now the next major language development was the Venetians in 1200 BC. Now the Venetians uh, wrote from right to left. They were the first uh, people to write with an alphabet and uh, they developed this in what is now Jordan, 
Beirut, Israel, around that area. The Venetians were seafaring people, traders, and they traded the whole length of the Mediterranean. In this diagram we're showing a black line. To the right of the black line are the languages that were written from right to left. And this included Archaic Greek, Aramaic, Nabataean, which then went on to become Arabic, and Hebrew, and uh, as we have already shown, Arabic and Hebrew are written from right to left. So between 1500 BC and 800 BC, there was no text written in a left to right direction. Everything was written in a right to left direction or in the case of Chinese vertically from right to left. The Greeks around 800 BC found that there was a problem in the population so they went to an intermediary system called Bostrophedon. If you Google Bostrophedon you will get uh, a full understanding uh, of what it in entailed. And uh, they continued with this for another 300 years up to 500 BC or 250 years and then they changed the direction to left to right. In the meantime the Romans uh, and uh, the Etruscans had adopted Greek and they too were using Bostrophedon but they used it for a shorter period of time and around 500 BC the Etruscans, Latin and Roman again gained the direction of left to right for the same reason as the Greeks and I believe that this was a, uh, a fact that the population couldn't cope with right to left text so they uh, changed the direction of text to left to right. As you follow the line down modern Greek now is written in a left to right direction and then from Roman we have all the Western languages English, German, uh, Latin, Spanish etc. So this is the language development. Now, the Japanese who took the original Chinese characters uh, were secondary. They didn't develop their own language and again English uh, wasn't developed, it was adopted from Roman. So in not developing the language they wouldn't have come across these problems of right to left, left to right scanning. They just accepted the direction that they were given from the Romans. Now, the, you can present English text in a vertical column, and this will diminish the distortion of scanning from right to left because you will be scanning vertically as well as scanning in your preferred direction. Uh, so this is a, a solution, an interim solution, uh, for dyslexic readers. Please keep watching and uh, the videos together will, will come together and show how Leonardo da Vinci found the primary cause of dyslexia in the 15th century. Thank you very much.